The holidays are a great time to serve your friends and family some really special sweet treats. And today on WTF, we're going to show you our take on sticky toffee pudding, hand pies, and snow globe cupcakes. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. So we are super excited because this is part two of our two-part special on Christmas celebrations. And last week we covered savory dishes, so if you haven't already, check that out. Link will be in the description below. But this week we are super excited because Scott's taken several wonderful recipes and kind of put our Modernist Pantry spin on them. So we're really excited to see, you know, what exactly they are. And if you haven't, remember, you have to ring the bell and subscribe to make sure that you get our content. It does come out every single Tuesday. And we like to always put out something kind of fun to help you get started in your culinary journey or try an exciting new recipe. So um, if you have watched WTF, you probably know that Scott and I really love sweets. So we were very excited to have an entire episode that's all about sweets. Um, I'm just going to let Scott jump into it and kind of see what he's got. Sure, so we took a few things that you can uh, say bring to a, a party or you could have at your house that are different than normal, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone's gonna have the normal pies that they get at the, the local bakery, but if you wanna make something, you can make it very special and be different and really wow your friends and family. So uh, we have a few different ones that I'm gonna show today. One of them is probably the best thing that we may have ever made here in the test kitchen. That's a high uh, claim. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, but this, yeah, uh, when we made it, it was, just wow, um, one of the best things ever. So it is a sticky toffee pudding. Mm -hmm. So this is more traditional in England than here in the States, but I think it should definitely make a jump over to the States. So what it is is uh, pretty much a date cake. You take some dates, you uh, pretty much reconstitute them in some hot water, you make a cake out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the cake itself is good, but it really gets brought up to the next level when you add the syrup. So it's uh, in England, it would be made with golden syrup, which is kind of like their take on an invert syrup or, okay. but if you can't find it, say you can't find it at your grocery store, you don't have a specialty store, uh, we have figured out a way to make something that tastes uh, what we think is better uh, without having to go get those specialty ingredients. There's also black treacle, which uh, you could really get in specialty stores, but not really get in a grocery store here okay. in the States. But if you want to use those ingredients, you can absolutely switch them out one for one, which also makes this recipe great. We use glucose syrup because we wanted a slightly less sweet syrup to uh, kind of match the flavor of the golden syrup. Mm -hmm. So we use our glucose DE42, which is also good, is that we can make this and we can hold on to this syrup uh, in the refrigerator, it's not going to crystallize. Cool. And then we used a little bit of molasses, some brown sugar, butter, and some cream, and we made this really great syrup. And what we wanna do is we take our cake and we just put it into the syrup. So we're gonna give it a few seconds on each side and we can flip it around as we go. Uh, and this is going to kind of soak in this syrup and obviously you can do this in many different ways. One way that we did it this week is similar to our Trace Leche's cake, is we poked a bunch of holes in it and just dumped the syrup over the top and that made mm -hmm. a really great um, uh, sticky toffee pudding as well. But we found that doing it this way in a nice warm syrup is mm -hmm. going to make for the best individual serving. So really simply just moving it around so each side gets a few seconds in that syrup. We're also gonna pour it over the top, you know, because okay. Uh, it's delicious. Right. So if you're making kind of a whole cake for this, do you recommend cutting it up and then doing e doing that for each individual piece or can they possibly do the whole thing if they if they have a yes. pot big enough and then cutting it up? So there's many different ways you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing this just like this for, you know, uh, an easy way to see it. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to take your cake, you can cut it up into squares, put it into a larger cake pan mm -hmm. and then pour the syrup over the top of each one of your individual portions and then just serve it like that, you absolutely could. You pop it in the oven for a few minutes and then just serve it like that. Mm -hmm. This is just an easy way for us to show you uh, the traditional way to do it. So I'm gonna flip it on its last side and you can see it's really getting nice and glazed mm -hmm. around all the sides. It's sticking to it very well. So what I'm gonna do now, just pop it on here. And I don't have it on hot, like it's not boiling or anything like that. It's just warm. So I'm gonna pour, put this down. And I'm going to pour some of the syrup right over the top. Ooh. 
That looks great. And Janie, you are equipped with a spoon, but the last thing, okay. the last thing that we're gonna put on it is some clotted cream. Now, if we were able to get it, if you're not able to get clotted cream, you can put a little scoop of mascarpone on here. Mm -hmm. It works just fine. You don't wanna sweeten this. This is right. sweet enough. This is exactly where, where you want it to be in sweetness level, but this is gonna help kind of round it out. I love clotted cream. Clotted cream is delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, Janie, if you wanna take a little bite, yeah. And really see how amazing this is. Uh, and like we said, this is probably our favorite thing. When, when we made it, it was uh, about 10 minutes of us just talking about how good it was, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's super good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat this whole thing. It's really great, and you can absolutely take that. We have plenty of it, uh, and we're going to eat it. So, <laughs> so that's one thing that you I'll can make that is. hold off for now, but that one's mine. So, uh, very different than you know something that you normally see at, at a mm -hmm. Christmas party or even any holiday party, but it's so delicious. It, it's all those flavors you want. It's nice. It's warm. It's uh, rich. It's everything you want from like a Christmas or a, a holiday treat. Yeah, but it's not too sweet either. I think when you say like there's soaking in a syrup, I was thinking it was going to be really really sweet, but mm -hmm. it isn't. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. that's what you know. The the golden syrup is not that sweet. I mean, it is mainly sugar, but it's not you know. Um, you know, just like, you know, when you have some that's so sweet, it, it almost yeah, punches you in the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is, is sweet, but there's a lot of rounded flavors that molasses kind of, you know, mm -hmm. lowers the sweetness down a little bit. There's some salt, there's that cream, the, the heaviness of the butter, and it makes it really nice. Granted, it's very heavy, so a few bites of this, you're, you're definitely yeah. done your, <laughs> your Christmas meal mm -hmm. uh, after that. So moving on, we have a few different things. Uh, everyone's, like we said, is gonna bring up pie. There's gonna be a million different pies. And the best part of the pie, at least for me, is the crust. I like a, a, a really crusty pie. Uh, and especially when you get down to that last little bite, you know, you get that really good crust. And what we wanted to do was make hand pies out of it. Mm -hmm. So the only downfall of hand pies is that sometimes you'll get them and the inside is just fruit and sugar. And when you have just fruit and sugar, you have a ton of water that gets pulled out of that fruit. So one thing that we came up with, uh, which is a very common thing in commercial settings, but not so much in the home setting, is adding a little bit of perfected sodium alginate. Mm -hmm. And when I mix that with my sugar and then I mix it with my fruit, kind of macerated my fruit, we made a burgundy pie here. So burgundy pie is strawberries, blackberries, strawberries, mm -hmm. you know, anything that you have left over. Uh, like me, I went strawberry picking with my family. I had like four bags of strawberries that I didn't use for jam, just sitting in my refrigerator in my, or in my freezer in my basement. And now I can use them for something, you know, for the holidays. And uh, this is a great way to do it. A little bit of wine, just a little bit of wine, uh, a dash of bitters, sugar, salt and the, the fruit and then that perfected sodium alginate catches all that water that comes out mm -hmm. and it makes a nice beautiful uh, filling. So as you can see this one right here made with no sodium alginate so when I cut it open you can actually see it was definitely blown out on the side too like it had nowhere to go so it started to spill out even before mm -hmm. I got it out of the oven yeah. and then this here you can see it is holding on there's a little bit of it coming out but it's holding on to that uh, filling really nice so when you take that bite of a ham pie you don't ruin your you know goofy Christmas sweater yeah so not you more cold than <laughs> inside office humor <laughs> so it's only funny to us we're like laughing yeah. about it <laughs> uh, so so this is a really great way and then you could fill this with anything or if you wanted to take this recipe and just make it into a normal pie mm -hmm. this works the exact same way so as you get that nice slice of uh, blueberry pie and you take it out, it doesn't just run into that empty void that you just made. And you know you have a seven other slices of pie that are half empty. So this yep. is a really good way to hold on to that, uh, you know, the filling in each slice and make them consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the things that people might be wondering about is, you know, why perfect a sodium alginate? So if, you, if you've been following us on Modernist Pantry, you probably have heard of us talking about sodium alginate at one point or another. Um, and, but why perfect it for this application? All right, so I'll run through the three of them. Regular sodium alginate can sometimes take around 24 hours to, to fully uh, hydrate. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna make this, have it sit for 24 hours because generally if I'm around the holidays, I don't have 24 hours to wait for something. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do that. Sphere Magic works a bit too quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so by the second I put it in there, it's gonna start gelling it up and it's not really going to allow so much of the moisture to come out because it's gonna start gelling almost immediately. I like the perfected sodium algae because I can get it in there, that moisture is gonna come out and then it's going to solidify. 
And one thing that I did with this is I held off on the blackberries. And this is just a quick tip. Blackberries have natural calcium in it. Mm -hmm. We know from all the spherification stuff that we've done, calcium and sodium alginate create a gel. So I held off on the blackberries. Mm -hmm. I made the, the maceration and then I added the blackberries right at the end and mixed okay. them in. It also helps with that gelling, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna start you know, creating those little bonds and gelling it up really nicely. Whereas if I put it in too early, it probably would have gelled a bit too early and not uh, caught all the liquid. Okay, and that's a really great tip mm -hmm. too. So, you know, if, I guess that's not really a concern if your fruit doesn't have calcium. Of course, it. of course. Blackberries are, are one that have, uh, I think, per ounce there's like 42 milligrams or something like that. So there's, there's a quite a bit of calcium in blackberries themselves, but normally the strawberries, raspberries are gonna be fine. Apples, yeah. you're gonna be fine. And what I like about hand pies too, I think we were talking about it, is you get like all this extra crust on it. Yeah. And also you don't have to share it to anybody because it's just yours. So yeah. I like that. It, it's like mm -hmm. the perfect pie. Mm -hmm. I really like hand pies that, uh, because of that. And you could just do the fold over ones. We wanted to make them look like, well, I wanted to make them look like uh, the hand pies you got when you were a kid. So that's why we made them these rectangular shapes. But they're yeah. really delicious. Mm -hmm. And our last one is kind of a callback to one of our first uh, videos we ever put up. And it's, uh, it's actually a recipe that we borrowed from uh, Elizabeth at Sugar Hero. And she made these great snow globe cupcakes mm -hmm. using gelatin. And I just wanted to show the difference between two different types of gelatin that we okay. carry. We always say use the perfected because perfected uh, or perfected platinum. gel platinum, mm -hmm. sorry, yeah, perfected <laughs> gel platinum um, is the clearest. It is the, the, uh, the most refined, it's the clearest of the gelatins that we have, mm -hmm. the gelatin sheets. And the, the one, as you can see on uh, your left, this uh, one. The, uh, so, camera left. Oh, sorry. This one right this here one. is made with a titanium. So you can see it's very yellow and it's almost cloudy uh, you know, looking through. Uh, not that titanium is bad or anything, it's just not great for this application. So you want to be able to see on the inside. I made a little snowman in there. You can get little figurines, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And we actually have an entire episode that you want to uh, check out in the links in the description below so you can see uh, us making those. Yeah. So kind of one of the things that's wonderful about the holidays and especially holiday desserts is that no matter how full people are, you always find room for dessert, right? Yes. But because you've already eaten a whole meal, you want to make sure that you're giving people like the best dessert possible so that however much you can squeeze into your to whatever remains of your stomach is like something really memorable and something really wonderful. Um, and so these are kind of, and I kind of like what you did here because there's kind of like a traditional sweet like pies, like a little less sweet, and then just kind of something that's fun and unique. Mm -hmm. You can bring yeah. it to a party and no one's going to really Or you can do it with your it. kids or anything mm -hmm. like that. And really, you know, if they're having a holiday party at school, they want to look cool too. So if they brought that in, they would absolutely be the, the talk of the class. I know. And do you just want to quickly touch upon like the technique to doing this? Because I know you yeah. could, it's all in the video. It is in the video, but what you, you do is you take you a balloon, mm -hmm. you blow up like a little water balloon. You don't want a bigger balloon than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you heat up some of the gelatin, a little bit of sugar. Um, so you basically bloom the gelatin, mix it in with some sugar, heat it up, and then you roll the balloon in it, you let it dry for a few minutes, you roll it in it again. So it's actually like coated three times. And then uh, the next day, well, sometimes between one and three days, depending on how dry the environment is, mm -hmm. uh, you're able to you know, poke a little hole in the balloon and then gently pull it away from the insides and boom, you have a, like a, basically a shell. Mm -hmm. uh, it is edible, um, but I would not suggest eating the entire thing in one bite. You have to you know, break off little pieces, uh, but it looks great on a cupcake. Yeah, so hopefully um, check out our other, recipe, uh, other recipes on the part one of our Christmas special. So that one's all about kind of, you know, like well, how do you make the most out of your leftovers as well as, well as some fun recipes and sides that you can try as well. And, and this one's a little bit more, I think, inspirational in terms of like just offering a variety of options to do just something new and different this holiday season. Mm -hmm. So we're going to then proceed to eat all this food and, and possibly get overstuffed, but that's what the holidays are for, right? And take a nap. I know, exactly. <laughs> so from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. If you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, 
helping you create memorable and magical experiences.